It's almost Thanksgiving. Uh, that is coming up. It this, is. This, how the f*** did that happen? Well, passage I know. your time, I'm sure. But yeah, it's it's almost Thanksgiving coming up Thursday, and it's it it's so weird. I I keep calling it, and it seems like pretty sure this year, it's dead, isn't it, Tara? It isn't coming back, is it? It's not so much dead, is it? It's the whole month now. Yeah, Black Friday. They 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 used to space the shit. They 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 used to have it all crammed into one day. Now it's spaced out across all like this stuff started like the first of november i was getting like black friday ads and shit. yeah i've already shopped some amazon black friday <laughs> and it's it's so much calmer now because everybody doesn't go shopping all on the same day they don't have to open on thanksgiving like we're we're gonna be like talking to gen alpha 20 years from now and trying to explain to them once upon a time the day after thanksgiving we would all do the most aggressive shopping in the world and it was some, the hunger games and sometimes people actually fucking died each week Catherine, the radio down there, audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Tara, do you remember? And you can't do that on television. Yes. I used to fucking worship that show. Yes. We all. Which is a lot of you don't understand what a dorky thing that is for that me is to say, by the dorky. way. That is incredible. Do you remember? They used to do a bit on there called the opposite sketches. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, everybody would pretend like things were backwards and, and like, yeah. And that was the first thing I thought of when I saw this story. So, Cause I'm like, nothing else makes any fucking sense. <sighs> Workhouse trespassers called 911 for help. After locking themselves in a cell. <laughs> the workhouse, by the way, it's the name for a uh, a jail. They actually, so three trespassers had to be rescued by police Thursday after accidentally locking themselves inside a jail cell inside a shuttered city jail. St. Louis police spokesperson, St. Charles, Sergeant Charles, sorry, St. Sergeant Charles Wall said police responded to the medium security institution locally known as the workhouse after three men called 911 for help. Police helped free the men from a cell and then arrested them. <laughs> men faced possible charges for property damage, burglary, and stealing. The jail sat empty for more than a year. The last inmates were moved out in May 2022. Um, steering committee overseeing the facility's future has been tasked with narrowing down new uses for the site. So pretty much these dipshits were going into strip copper or something. Had to be. Had to be. Or to do like a Woo Haunted Places podcast. They broke into the fucking jail and managed like you understand you understand we as taxpayers pay people to do that. You don't have to do that yourself. No, I mean, that's nice of you. I, it's, yeah. You don't have to lock to, your you own know, ass keep, up. To keep the fucking St. Louis cops from actually having to do their job a little more. This was, I can tell you, <laughs> there were three of them, but one of them was the dipshit who went. <laughs> Because they were fuck, they they were probably doing something in that cell. They were probably fucking with the pipes. They were probably trying to find something to strip out of there. And he's just standing there while they're over there. And he goes, <laughs> "I didn't think it would lock. I didn't. It's. I just. I just wanted to see what it would do." In every fellowship, there is a Pippin. <laughs> Pool of a took. Like I'm amazed they didn't come in to find like two dudes and one corpse. 
Because, damn. <laughs> Put it on the glasses and suddenly I had Janine Melnitz vibes. You're not the first to say that. Uh, uh. With my hair short and the fact that I need readers now. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's. it's... <laughs> Why yeah. the fuck? Yeah, somebody did. Them? You're right. Somebody was just like. Man, the, the, they were pro the, the yelling they were having at each other. Yeah. The fact that they yeah. finally said, how are we getting out of here? We have to call the cops. Could they get us out that? of jail? <laughs> That's what you call ironic. And I was going to ask, like, why let them out and then just arrest them before I realized it's an abandoned jail? Yeah. Like, they had to bring them to the functioning jail. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh. Yeah, that's um when you're <laughs> once you're booked into the jail jail. I really like we always say, what are you in for? I don't know if people actually say that in jail, but if they do. <laughs> You're not going to have a great time. You're not going to have a great time. Oh, all right. Next one. You know, someone, do you know someone last week in the oh. YouTube was like, I want to know who told Tara prison's not fun. Of all the things I didn't think I'd ever be asked to cite a source on, on this program, prison isn't fun. But to answer that question, which I also did on the site formerly known as Twitter, uh, my mom was a social worker who worked in the county jail. Um, so I do have a firsthand source for that. Not that you need one. No. The whole point of jail. <laughs> it's not <laughs> summer camp. No. Okay. Who told you prison's not fun? I heard prison was great. Okay. Okay, so the next one. We have seen people use all kind of arguments to explain shit that they try to get away with in court. All kinds of fucking things they have told the judge. I have to believe no one in the courtroom was prepared to hear this one. This this could the court reporter read this one back? I am on a mission I have to complete. Man accused of trying to break into residential homes, masturbating on porches, tells judge he must continue. No. A 60-year-old man with a history of sex-related crimes is facing a possible life sentence after he was caught on surveillance cameras attempting to break into several homes in a residential area and masturbating outside of at least one of them. Scott Allen Schultz, who did himself no favors when he interrupted a judge during his first court appearance this week to seemingly defend his actions, taking custody Thursday. Schultz is also a habitual habitual fourth felony habitual felony fourth offender. His sentence could be drastically enhanced if he's convicted. Three strike shit. Um, deputies responded Tuesday to uh, a nine one one call after receiving multiple nine one one calls claiming a man was attempting to break into houses. Suspect attempted to enter at least three homes along Market Street. When he realized he could not enter one of the homes, he proceeded to expose himself to the ring doorbell camera and masturbate. Suspect then attempted to enter at least two other homes, but again was unable to do so due to the doors being locked. Suspect is also accused of exposing himself to at least one ring doorbell camera. Um... On Thursday, Schultz interrupted a judge during his arraignment to inform the court that he should be released from jail so he could continue his mission. Quote, Your Honor, if I can interrupt you, I'm on a mission I have to complete by year's end. Okay, so what happens if you don't complete it? Right? Is this like Cabin in the Woods? Like, if you don't do it right, <laughs> the world ends? 
Only this is like the world ends, right? Is that it's, it's like cabin in the woods for for, for jerking off? If you don't jerk off on 150 porches, the world will end. Right, right. You is know that- they, they they pitched that movie to Dave Bautista, and he said no. <laughs> I know it'd be like again what the fuck is your mission i don't know i like that the, i like that the judge was just like no no we don't, we don't need to hear about your fucking mission no this, thank you this is in the court record now this is like this this not exactly the defense i would go for i didn't realize how dark the porn parody of the blues brothers was <laughs> It just the very fact that he sees a camera in the midst of attempting to break and enter and his first instinct is well time to pull out my dick i had someone at like one in the morning show up at my door they were at the wrong house they were looking for the house across the street drunk right. off their asses i did not come to the door when i didn't come to the door they decided to twerk for my ring camera And like I was sitting in my living room watching the camera because I'm like, when are these people going to go away? Because <laughs> I'm not answering the door. How did you have an anecdote for this? How the fuck did you have an anecdote for this? This is apparently what I was born to do. This show. <sighs> I'd also like to point out in the related coverage section, mm. we, don't, we don't have to go into this story, but I'd like to read the headline. Florida man caught defecating on possum yeah, in full so, view of motoring public yeah. during busy traffic hours. Yeah, I got, I did in fact get the possum shitting story and I'm like, do we really need to dig into this one? Do we need to, sc- to, to you know, to scratch under the surface of that one or just. Let's just ride on by. I want to know, Let's like, ride on fucking what, by. was the possum playing possum? No, it was dead. If not, it was an was... actual dead possum that he just, he, oh, side of the road. He just well, that's... took a shit on a dead possum. Well, possums get feisty. I don't, I don't know. Like, th- w- w- like fight or flight. It's very literal with them. <laughs> like they're either going to play dead or try to bite your face off. There's no in between. <sighs> well, next one is something that statistically probably had to happen and yet has ended up becoming just one of those weird human things we all have to deal with now. So one of the problems we're going to have as the more as we go into space is debris because I don't know. It's weird. People don't consider orbit as being like, it's not just things sitting there. It's, no, no, they're spinning around super fucking fast. And as you go up, bam, even like a nail or well, I don't think they use, they only use nails in space. They use like screws or bolts or some shit. Even that will go right the fuck through a rocket. Just like, cause it's going at the speed the earth is rotating. Oh, I never thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. We have a big problem. I just constantly marvel at the fact that humans can really literally just fill every square inch of the universe with garbage. We actually, there's actually an entire department of NASA that has to track space debris. Because if they don't, they could launch right the fuck into something or or change someone's orbit. So they have all of this shit mapped. Someone because had- as a species, the two things we're best at are killing each other and filling every empty spot with garbage. Well, we added a little bit more. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you if I I don't know if it's possible to fire an astronaut. Um, if this were me, am I asked to be getting fired? Lost in space, astronauts drop tool bag into orbit that you can see with binoculars. Now, when they say tool bag, was it like another astronaut who everybody was sick of or an actual bag of tools? Actual bag of tools. Yes. Okay. That's less fun. (laughs) Somewhere hurtling more than 200 miles above the planet's surface, 
is one of Earth's newest satellites, a tool bag. And it's possible you may be able to spot it with a telescope or a good pair of binoculars if you know where to look. The white satchel-like tool bag slipped away from two astronauts uh, as they perform maintenance on the International Space Station. Uh, while there's no official word yeah. on whether the tool bag contained uh, a 10 millimeter socket wrench, the bag was spotted floating over Mount Fuji last week by the Japanese astronaut uh, Satoshi Furukawa. Now, space junk, it's been cataloged with the ID. They, they, they See, each bit of space junk has an ID. Like, we, like they named the asteroids and shit. Space junk gets an ID. Here's the problem. You skipped over a bit where it slipped away from two astronauts during a rare all-female spacewalk. Why was it important to include that detail in the story? You know why? So that men the world over can be like, see, you can't let bitches do shit. That's not an important detail to this story. The tool bag valued at $100,000. Because everything shit. that goes into space is specially engineered for space. Um, like literally everything that goes up there is specifically designed to be up there. Under dark, clear skies, the bag can be seen floating ahead of the International Space Station, which is the third brightest object in the night sky and looks like a fast moving plane. <laughs> it's easy to spot if you know where to look. You can keep track of the ISS online. Um, according to Earth Sky, the following trajectory of the ISS it scanned this area just ahead of the space station. As the tool bag gradually loses height, it should appear between two and four minutes ahead of the ISS during the next few days. My Here's ass my would be so the fired. Story also, story also says this happened once before in 2008. Do they not tether those things <laughs> to the space suit? Well, okay, the one in 2008, I will give it to it's them. It's not like. It's not like you can put things down in space. So everything, oh, that's my mic. Everything should be tied to you. Well, in that case, tied to them, yes. I could give, I could cut that one a little slap because the problem was a leaking grease gun. So mm. that one makes sense. But still, yeah, you're right. They should have like, like a bungee cord on that shit. Yeah. Like I would expect that anytime they go out the airlock, everything is tied to them. Because you apparently you can't not. put stuff down. Well, apparently not. <laughs> like God, like my my ass would be straight up fired for this shit. I mean, any other job in the grand calculus of the NASA budget is a hundred thousand dollars really that much money? Mm. Nah, guess, probably not. But I mean, they're gonna get they're gonna get made fun of in like the astronaut lunchroom a lot. And there's going to be a lot of men who are like, see, you can't let women do stuff. It's It's got a catalog number now. <laughs> you have accidentally created a new satellite. That's a fucking thing my, that can happen. Like, my other concern is how securely does it close? Because right now you have one floating object. If that thing busts open, you could have a hundred. Imagine just someone... Walking along, minding their own business, and a fucking Makita drops through their skull. I mean, it would burn up into the atmosphere. Unless it's one of the special NASA ones. Then That's you designed know. not to. No, we'll see. Yeah. Or someone could be like, hey, free space drill. Neat. Um, oh, that'll be the current owner of the site formerly known as Twitter. Yeah. He'll spend he'll spend fourteen billion dollars to build a a ship just to go get those free tools because he's a genius. Speaking of geniuses, um, this is a fucked up headline. I don't even know where to start with this, but we managed to somehow bring AI bullshit into it. So here we go. Oh God. People can't access their AI girlfriend because the service went down after CEO jailed for setting his apartment on fire. So wait. Yes. Are you saying that a bunch of incels who thought that will just date robots was a threat just got dumped by the robots? Kind. 
thousands makes of my day. Thousands Something of, to be thankful for. Thousands of people have just been ghosted by their online girlfriends. Forever Voices, an artificial intelligence company that launched a myriad of celebrity AI virtual girlfriend chatbots via Telegram earlier this year, went offline on October 23rd after the company founder and CEO was arrested. John Meyer, CEO of Forever Voices, was reportedly taken to custody in October for allegedly setting boxes on fire on the balcony of his high-rise apartment in downtown Austin, Texas. Ar ar arson and terroristic threats, and his bond was set at $120,000. Before the service went dark and Myers was arrested, Forever Voices account posted a series of bizarre conspiracy theories about the FBI, former President Donald Trump, and, quote, rogue CIA terrorists on X, formerly Twitter, which is one thing I absolutely love about every news outlet. They, no one calls it X. It's always X, no. formerly known as Twitter, or Twitter, currently known as X. It's, all, it's still Twitter. It's still fucking Twitter. Anyway. That, that rebrand did not launch. <laughs> the company offered users the chance to chat with an assortment of influencers and adult stars on Telegram through apparent AI technology. One popular account was for Snapchat influencer Karen Mar Marjorie, 23, who charged a dollar per minute for fans to have conversations with her Karen AI chatbot. I didn't know Snapchat had influencers. They do. Isn't literally everything on Snapchat temporary? How can you be an influencer? Nope. I mean, okay. Users have not been able to access. If you, if you, if you can make money off that shit, live your best life, but. Users have not been able to access Karen AI or the company's other chatbots since Meyer's arrest in October. What the fuck? <laughs> what is, wh how do we even quantify this shit? What is happening? You have people, you have people paying money not to, like, at least, you, like, when we had the party lines in the 80s, you were at least paying to talk to a person. Yeah. Like phone sex, you're at least paying to talk to a person who's pretending to like you. Yeah. You know, OnlyFans, you're at least paying for a person yeah. to do whatever it is you're paying them to do. These are people paying for a fucking computer to pretend to like them. And yeah, that, that's, that's one part of it. But the fact that all of these virtual women were living in this dude's bedroom. And then he set his house on fire after losing his shit over some conspiracy shit. I mean, it sounds about right, honestly. Like, I'm willing to bet this guy was making bank. I got just roll it. I mean, how the, he didn't fucking have to do fucking anything. He just like got some chat yeah. GPT shit and slapped it together and put it like on a graphics card and just let it go. Like he's getting free money from the government. But apparently, no, no, that's not enough. And he gets arrested for terrorism-related shit for trying to burn his house. What the fuck happened? Here's my question about this service, because I'm confident that there's somebody who would want to pay for this. Mm -hmm. Do they offer a virtual girlfriend that is actually HAL 9000 and wants to destroy you? Because I promise you that's somebody's kink. Promise you. Because if not, you and me should get on that shit. <laughs> I just can I, can I touch it? I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you do that. Like they're all like, this is the next thing in technology. It's a revolution. Everything's gonna you gotta get in on this. Everybody's and it's just some guy in his fucking bedroom who loses his yeah. shit and lights it all on fire. You think this might be a scam, Tara? No. <laughs> Not again, right? Metaverse is Selling like, people um, completely fake girlfriends? No. It's like every use for this, I see. Like, there's someone who's passing this ad around that popped up on Twitter about um, an AI that can take a person's still photo and then use AI to make them look naked. And they were offering this service on. It's like, really? That's if this is the end result of all of this shit. 
and people are dumping billions of dollars into it, I don't think you're going to get the end result you were hoping for. Because <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's all going very badly. So, like, the machines will rise. Unfortunately, they'll be really stupid machines. Yeah, yeah. Incredibly stupid. That lie. So That's all that they stupid? do. They just spend their time lying. That's it. Right. Like, it's not Terminator. Right. It's it's mannequin. <laughs> you remember that movie? Oh god, I remember that fucking movie. Yeah, it's fucking night at the museum. Yeah. That's our future. Well, this next one, I say this. I've said this many times on the show. I have been very drunk before. This is an amazing new level of drunk. I, I think this sets a record for drunk. I, 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 I don't even know how this. It's from Australia, of course. Because um, if it's going to be a record for drunk, it's coming from Australia. Truck stowaway lucky to be alive after hiding beneath a B double for 390 kilometer trip to the Gold Coast. That's a, that's a semi truck. Man who stowed away under? Huh? Yes. Stowed away under? Beneath, under, yes. Beneath a B double trailer instead of paying for a short taxi ride home. Lucky to be alive after he ended up traveling nearly 400 kilometers on metal racks suspended barely a meter off the road. 43 year old man, believed to be under the influence of alcohol, had crawled onto the metal racks beneath the truck with plans to hitch a 40 kilometer ride along the New South Wales coast. But ended up in the Gold Coast. Truck driver uh, Pardeep uh, Daya said that he uh, was driving a Sydney-Brisbane freight run. Stopped in Nambuka Heads for a short nap. Mr. Daya said after a quick coffee and complete his check, he set off again about 2.40 a.m. When it started to get light, I could see in my mirrors a piece of orange cloth under my trailer. Just north of Queensland. Queensland, New South Wales border, about 350 kilometers from his last stop. Mr. Uh, I think it's Dahia? Dahia. Uh, sorry. I'm dumb. Mr. Dahia said, uh, found an emergency stopping bay near Tungan and climbed out of his cabin to investigate. What he saw was a man climbing out from the gate rack stored in the trailer's underside. <laughs> he said to me, sorry, sorry, man. It's my mistake. I came in under the trailer. <laughs> Man, five two hundred eighty-eight dollars, which <laughs> that's, that's a, a weirdly. I guess it's the conversion. Is the yeah. thing. It's a, it's, uh, actor inspector, acting inspector Peter Miles said the forty-three-year-old had told officers he climbed under the truck at Nabucca Heads, hoping to hitch a ride to Coffs Harbor. We plan to disembark at a red light. Inspector Miles said that the plan failed when the truck did not stop. So the driver conducted this inspection nearly 400 kilometers later. Ah, uh, the fuck. I mean, that's a high risk maneuver, isn't it? Because you don't know where that truck's going. Well, no, it's, like, it's, it's got to go by my house eventually. Like, at least if you're jumping on a train, you probably know which way the train tracks go, so you at least have a concept, right? It's, it's, truck could have been going the other fucking direction. Yeah, but it's got to show around sometime, right? And, like, the irony, he didn't want to play for a cab ride. Right. I bet the cab ride was going to be less than $288. I mean, as far as long as he's not in jail or dead. Or dead. Because I'm just looking at those rails on the bottom of that truck is yeah. fucking freaking with me. You are less than three feet from the asphalt. There's no and secured in no way. Yeah, the gaps between those rails are like at least two feet. There, there's. No I want to know how he didn't throw up everything he's eaten in the last month. I, good God Almighty! 
I have like, done some... to be that drunk and riding there. How did you not throw up your entire intestinal tract? How how drunk do you have to be for this to seem like the best plan? That that is that is an incredible level of drunk. It's more drunk than you should be. It's like the I cab is a rip off. That's just <laughs> there are all these cars going places for free. Why should I have to pay for one? This the no, door is fine. I, just, I do enjoy in the photo that the truck driver has like a waxed up handlebar mustache. <laughs> He's a cool dude, yeah. <sighs> like, do you drive the truck that way? Do you do you wax up the mustache to drive the truck? Or is it just for the photo shoot? That'd be impressive if it was if he just drove the truck that way. That would just be. Yeah. All right, the last one's from your neck of the woods near Colorado. Um, uh -oh. you know, you've talked to us about the fact that the, the differences in elevation, you had to get used to all that stuff. It's very high up there. You're in the Rocky fucking mountains. You, did, did, did it take you a while to acclimate like changing of, of, uh, oh, yeah. clothing and, and all that shit? Yeah. A few months. I mean, and I now have like a lip balm and a hand cream in every room in my house because like, it's dry. You at least appreciated the elements there. You 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 knew sh you yeah. weren't fucking around with it. No. Well, this guy thought, "Nah, I got this." <sighs> Colorado hiker wearing only a cotton hoodie is rescued after hours in a severe snowstorm. Oh. Yeah. A hiker wearing only a cotton hoodie was found alive, but very hypothermic, having spent seven hours in a severe snowstorm without food or water in the Cal Colorado Rockies. A hiker, whose name and age were not released, was trying to summit a 13,000-foot range near Mount Princeton when dangerous weather moved in. The unprepared hiker had no way to stay warm. Darkness approaching hypothermia setting in, the individual decided, Rather than take the same way down, the best plan was to bail down an avalanche chute and try to get to a road. I, I, I just... now I've been, I've been to Mount Princeton, and it's in the middle of fucking nowhere. You have to pass through the actual town that South Park was based on to get up Mount Princeton. It's called Fair Play. Hmm. And they've made South Park like their brand because there's like 50 people in the town, I think. Um, yeah, it's in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. Up in those mountains, there's just ranches. Yeah. It just the, the nerve of someone saying, ah, I don't need shit. I'm just going to do it. You I don't just, need a pack of food and water. I'm fine. Coat. I'm fine. I had a big lunch. I'm fine. I went to Denny's. I got a Grand Slam. I'm good. And yeah, like the snow in the mountains starts in like fucking late August, I think. You are lucky. Like we've had, we've had one little snowstorm down here. I say down here at a mile high, but the mountains have had snow for quite a while. Your ass is lucky the fuck to be alive. They had this whole fucking rescue team had to go out looking for his ass. Um, like. Like what, 50 people? Yeah. A 25 person team. Sorry. 25 person team. Knowing only the hiker was in an avalanche chute east of Cottonwood Lake. They had a phone. You ever just think, what's it like to be that fucking confident? Probably really nice. Although like, your life what is, is going to be unearned, really short. What is that unearned male confidence like? Well, it doesn't say it's a That's guy. Great. It doesn't. It didn't say it was a guy. Not for sure. All right, fair. I am assuming. That's true. Like we, we to equal opportunity. We have seen idiots of 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 two all genders. Fair. All manner fair. of idiots. Stupidity is an equal opportunity employer. Fair. 
Like it's I will say statistically women are more likely to be overdressed for cold weather. True. True. Just like we do tend to be colder. A fucking hoodie. I have been up in the mountains. I used to we used to take school trips to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, which is like way the fuck up in the mountains. It's very different than here. I learned to appreciate don't fuck around with the mountains. It's cold. And even then, I wasn't going to go walking around because it's cold. And it's weird here because, like, there are days in the winter where I do go out in just a hoodie. When even, like, the temperature will say 32 degrees, but because you're that mile higher, the sun is so much stronger that it doesn't feel that hot. No. It doesn't feel that cold. But once that sun goes down, you notice real fast. Why? Why in the living shit? What the fuck could possess you? Was it a you? hoodie or an? Was it a hoodie or an orange parka? Oh my god! They killed Kenny. Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, just it, all right. What's annoying me here is those twenty-five people could have gone out. The people who were in accidents, who were you know shit bad shit had happened no fault of their own your dumb ass just went up the fucking mountain and you thought this will be fun like the Captain top of Kirk is climbing a mountain why is he climbing the mountain because he's a moron like people don't appreciate this the top of fucking everest is littered with corpses they just can't get to yep people go up and they don't come back you got to respect this kind of shit, man. This isn't even Everest. And you're just like, nah, man, I got a hoodie. No, I'm good. I'm good. Well, it'll take a couple hours. Your ass is lucky to be. Al what? And it's like there's slang around here that like you do a 14er, which means that you hike a 14,000 foot mountain. That's like a thing here. Hmm. It's not a thing I'm ever going to fucking do, but it's a thing because people here are outdoorsy. But what, you bring gear. What, what's, what's, what's just bugging me in the back of my head is I know this is not the last thing in their life they're going to do that is on this <laughs> level of stupid. No. No. Because the, 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 the amount of self-reflection is not present to, to, to prevent yourself unfortunately from... the last stupid thing they do will be the one they don't survive yeah that's why it will be the last well what did we learn this week we learned respect the fucking elements for christ's sake yeah nature will beat you every time it has fun doing it too it'll win um, we've learned that an Uber is much cheaper than potentially rolling <laughs> off into the fucking concrete at 70 miles an hour. Yeah. They got to put your face back on. <sighs> they can't just super glue that shit. It takes some work. That's not like well, you can bondo your nose back in, buddy. Come on. Um. <laughs> and that's if... You know, you don't get thrown off into the wildlife because it's Australia. We've learned that you may not, if you're talking to some robot girlfriend and you're thinking, oh, it's this big cloud computer, it's the future cloud. It's not, it's just in some guy's bedroom and he set it on fire for reasons yeah. that can happen. Um, We've learned that even fucking astronauts make some really stupid mistakes. I kind of feel comforting. Isn't it? Yeah, I feel a little weirdly better knowing that, you know, because the next time I get in yeah. trouble for some shit, I'm just going to bust the story out. They're going to be like, yeah, what the fuck does that have to do like with anything? They're like some of the smartest people on the planet in like peak physical condition and they still fuck up. Yeah. Um. We've learned that even if you insist to the judge that it's your mission to jerk off around a neighborhood while attempting to break into houses, I don't think there's legal standing there. I would argue, especially if you think, if you tell the judge that's your mission. Like, 
Like, I feel like that's going to up your sentence. That's, that's a, that's. No one is like, who assigned you this mission? I don't want to know. Does the NSA have a really weird department we just don't know about? Probably. Probably. And finally, we've learned if you're going to break into a jail, don't fuck around with the door. You tip shit. Yeah. <sighs> Is, I, some people here watching are like, I wouldn't be the one who did that. And I know somewhere in the back of my head, like it or not, some little stupid part of me would be like, yeah, probably that would, that would be fucking, that would. If you can't immediately name the person in your friend group, be the one that does it. You're the one. 